welcome to uh, Scottish Women's Institute's uh, Gins, Goodies and Gifts. And this is a, a, um, a whistle stop tour of some fabulous things you can do for Christmas, um, handmade, handmade gifts and handmade bags, and also some handmade um, goodies that you might not have thought about for having around the Christmas table or when friends arrive. So uh, we've got three fabulous members here tonight. Um, Linda McTurk from Stewartry Federation is going to show us the um, gins, how to do flavoured gins. Um, and then we're, then we're going to go to, um, to uh, Caroline. And Caroline's going to show us the goodies she's made, um, lots of uh, flavoured nuts and uh, just really lovely little things to have, have um, if you've got guests coming around, popping around for a drink. And, uh, and then we're going to go to Maz Thorne and Maz is going to show us how to make gift bags. So um, so really, this is about ways of ways of saving a wee bit of money or doing things a homespun way, which is a really nice thing to do at Christmas. Well, good evening, ladies. Now, I'm no expert gin maker. I'm more of an expert at drinking it than, than actually making it. And I've got to say, even though I'm using gin tonight, you could use vodka uh, for these uh, infusions because they're not really liqueurs. Most of them, in fact, they will all be ready uh, by Christmas time. So the first one I'm going to make is it's gin, Christmas gin, uh, with the clementines. Now, you'll need quite a large jar to put in, and I like to put a label on a jar and when I make it, because you think you'll remember, but you don't, or at least I don't. So if I open it up, and for the, the Christmas engine, in here I have uh, some sugar. Now, I'll give you the quantities that I am using uh, tonight, and I've got uh, one and a half tablespoons of uh, sugar in here, uh, one clementine, and I've taken the zest off of part of it and cut it into strips and put it in here as well. And I've got 25 grams of ginger, which uh, I chopped up, and I need a bay leaf. So I haven't put that in, so I'll pop the bay leaf in there, the lid back on, and then I'm just going to tip the sugar and the zest in there. Just make sure you get it all, all in. And then I'm going to measure 375 mils of uh, gin. Now, I didn't go out and buy gin. I'm a member of a, a gin craft club or craft gin club and uh, this was one, a gin that I bought and it's Welsh and I thought it would be nice for this because when I read the particulars on the, the bottle uh, it said uh, it's got cloves and ginger in it and I thought oh ideal for our Christmas uh, gin. So I want 375 mils so just tip that in here. Now, I haven't given you the recipes because if you want, because I've taken them out of magazines, I can't really put them on because of copyright. Mm -hmm. But if you go into or onto the internet for this Christmas gin, if you go on the Olive uh, website, uh, you will uh, get it. I'm just going to rinse out uh, this a bit and tip the rest of that in there. Linda, then, Linda uh, Jane's asking if um, the ginger is fresh or powdered. Yeah, yes, it's fresh, fresh ginger Great. Uh, I use. And when I use sugar for doing this, um, in this case, because they're only going to be infused for a short time, I've used caster sugar. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing, say, slow gin and leaving it for several months, uh, I use granulated. Right. So just tip that in there. Got a really big jar here, but it was the one that I had in the house because usually I make bigger quantity. 
and you just give it a stir about. And you want to leave that to infuse this one three days. Mm -hmm, great. So it doesn't take that long. You can leave it longer if you want. And if you leave it longer, it'll have slightly uh, you know, stronger uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. So pop this one to the side. And the next one is so if we were looking river up, gin. So if we were looking that one up, what would that one be called? Just say the say the name of the what the clementine. Christmas gin with clementine. Lovely. That's what it looks like. Great. Okay. Easy peasy. That's, That's great. great. Yeah. And the next one is rhubarb. Now. I had to go out and buy the rhubarb for <laughs> this, I've got to say, because I didn't have any in the, the freezer. And you want about, the, well, I, in here, I've got 350 grams of rhubarb. And you want to put 140 grams of castor sugar in this the day before you add the gin, because there is gin in there, but you can see the liquid. Yeah. And when you sugar, uh, to the rhubarb, it draws out the, the juice mm -hmm. uh, in the rhubarb. So um, what I need to do with this one now is add the gin. But again, if you were more a vodka person, mm -hmm. you could add a uh, vodka to it. Now it so happens I'm going to add this gin here because I had this uh, left over and I'll, I just want 280 mils. Uh, of this. So now what I read the reviews, you know, everybody has different tastes, and some people are oh, too much sugar uh, in certain recipes. So once you've made it once, you'll know whether uh, it's going to be too sweet uh, mm. or not. So you can cut down on the sugar or uh, increase the, the fruit. To me, it's not an exact science, but I suppose if somebody was really keen on it, they would say, well, you really do need to measure things out, but I just take potluck. But <laughs> this recipe, it's good food, so you can print it off. And they do say not to use a uh, golden um, castor sugar because it uh, it just muddles the, the colour. Yeah. So you want to pop yeah. that in there. Now you would obviously know this is rhubarb, but I still like to, to label it, give it a wee sugar about. And because it's say, castor sugar, it'll soon, it soon dissolve. Now, last one, need a dish. It's a strawberry one. And again, this is in the, the good food one. And I like this. It's quite um, refreshing. I think this is nice for the summer, uh, this one. Mm -hmm. I like this for the summer time. But, uh, right. I've prepared the strawberries beforehand. Now, to be honest, I've never actually made this in the winter time. Mm -hmm. I usually do it in the summer. Scottish strawberries are on the go. And I've got to say, I cut, I sliced the strawberries. I've got 200 grams uh, of strawberries in here. And I tasted them and they taste of nothing. Mm -hmm. They're form. So mm -hmm. you can't really expect anything else. But, you know, it's one that would be ideal made in the summertime. So I'm going to tip this lot. Uh, in here, probably end up getting this all over the floor. <laughs> but, uh, just gently ease it in. So you've done the same again. You've got the sugar in that too, yeah? Yes. Is that the to draw out the, draw out the flavor yeah. or is it just handy? In there, yeah. That, uh, and then, oh, what gin am I going to use? I'm going to use, I've got Welsh gin because I've got some of this left. <laughs> and uh, I need uh, 350 mils. The recipe for this one actually says uh, use Hendrix or Brockman's. Mm -hmm. Now, 
they're quite expensive. So, do you know, at the end of the day, Aldi and Lidl, and I think it's particularly Aldi, mm -hmm. have a really good gin to use as a base yeah. uh, for uh, for these. So you could use that. But so say I wanted to use up uh, what I'd left, so 350 mm -hmm. mils. And actually, I just, I wanted to use this gin because I do not like the bottle. It's sort of like a little noise because peculiar, you know, that's just me. Like, <laughs> so how much sugar did you put in the strawberries? I put uh, grams of the sugar. <laughs> Yeah, keep it right, Polly, because that's I fine, get that's fine. So in this jar, there's the 50 grams of sugar and 200 grams of strawberries, which have been uh, sliced. And then I'm just going to add the gin to it. There we are. I put it on and then give these a sugar about. And you know, the colour comes out, you won't see the colour, and you can see the, the sugar oh, yeah. at the bottom. Um, but you know, it becomes a nice pinky shade, as does the, the rhubarb. Mm -hmm. So that's the three that these will be ready for Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So, what, what, is your, so what is your address, Linda? <laughs> oh, you're all welcome. <laughs> Oh, I'm more than happy to have you all. <laughs> and the ones that I've got here, these are liqueurs. Mm -hmm. Now, this one, this one was made with crab apples, mm -hmm. and it's the most beautiful colour. You can't really see it. There's Lovely. a wee bit of sediment in it, but it was made in 2020. It must have been a good year because I had masses uh, of that. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is the damson and it damson makes love liqueur. It's really, uh, really nice. And I always think I remember how much sugar uh, I've put in. And it used to be I would put uh, in a kiln and I would just tip in whatever sugar I thought was required. But quite often I go it just to get an idea of the uh, how much sugar uh, am I eating? And then this one is the elderberry. Quite okay. a bit sugar. Uh, it, it's really nice. It's got a lovely smell. I wish you could... Oh, that's nice. That day. I did try rowing berries one year and I didn't like it. But that's just me. And I felt the rowing berries had an awful woody taste mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know somebody else might uh, think uh, think differently but these are definitely cures because they're quite syrupy mm -hmm. whereas the other ones they're not going to be sitting in uh, for too long um so is so that is that the is that the difference linda is that the difference between the infusion and the liqueur and the liqueur is it just the length of time is it just the I think it's to do with sort of the amount of sugar and the length of time mm -hmm. uh, that it sits. Because if I was doing the damson and these last three that I was showing you, I leave these uh, in the, the sugar uh, before I decanted them into yeah. the, yeah. the bottles. And what I do to strain them, uh, I've got a funnel and uh, I use a... Uh, coffee liners mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and muslin mm -hmm. and uh, you can either use one or the other but I, I tend to use both um, because it just to stop any sort of sediment uh, mm -hmm. going through but I think if it sits for any length of time that one's okay that's there was one of them that's just got a wee bit of sediment mm -hmm. uh, in the bottom but that's mm -hmm. That's two years old, yeah. uh, that one. And I can just see a wee bit of sediment uh, in the bottom 
part of that one. But as I say, I'm no expert, but uh, you're all welcome to come and try and give me your opinion. <laughs> we'll all be sozzled in our own house, so, I think. <laughs> savouries and things to go with uh, your drinks or your cocktails or your wine or whatever else beforehand. Again, like Linda, I don't have any recipes, um, but you can all go online or you can buy a book. Mm -hmm. So the first one I have here is the Bombay chickpeas. And this comes from a pinch of Nom book, which I bought in... Um, I think it was an Aldi I bought it. My sister recommended it to me. The quick and easy book, which would be the first one that they brought out probably. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's a, uh, I've got it in here somewhere. I've brought all my stuff with me, it doesn't matter. It's a 400 tin of chickpeas and you want to, oh yeah, my kitchen assistant has found it for me. I've got them all sitting in the tray here. And this is just Aldi's chickpeas, but wherever you're shopping, you know, buy them and take them. So drain them and rinse them and then put them onto some kitchen roll or a very clean tea towel or something and dry them off. They really need to be very dry. And also when you're drying them, have another tea towel on top of it and they're rolling around about, you'll get some of the wee shells and bits of the, the chickpeas coming out. So take them all out as well. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper and scatter the chickpeas over it and spray with low calorie spray. So be it a fry light or whatever, Aldi's equivalent or whatever else. My kitchen assistant has brought that <laughs> as well. Spray light is what they call it there, a fry light. Yeah. <clears throat> whatever you're asked to use when you're, uh, when you're on a slimming world diet. <laughs> so, Spread them out thinly, put the, the fat, the, the spray on it and put them in the oven for 25 minutes and shake the tray about halfway through, you know, just to make sure that they're moving all the time. And then mix garam masala, which I do have, but I'm not expecting you to find that in there. <laughs> um, onion salt and garlic granules in a bowl. Now, if you don't have garam masala, just use curry powder. Ordinary curry powder would do. With a lot of these things, I'm using other spices and such like, but I do quite a bit of cooking. I'm not saying that you need to buy garam masala, you need to buy garlic granules, onion salt, just use whatever you've got that would, you know, give it a bit of flavour. Mix that in a bowl and um, take the chickpeas out of the oven, put the chickpeas into the bowl and then cover them so that they're all getting, you know, covered, you know, in the spices and such like. Return it to the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes to crisp them up and then serve them warm. I'm serving them cold, everything's cold here tonight, um, or store them in an airtight jar. Now, these chickpeas were made well over a week ago and they're still all right. You know, they're, they were in just in a Tupperware box, you know, a, a plastic container with a lid. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's Bombay chickpeas. It was um, a pinch of gnome cookery book. You can look that up and you can just do what, them as easily as what that. What temperature oven did you have for that? Uh, for 200 degrees, 180 for, for fan and gas mm -hmm. six. Yeah. Everything actually is done at 200 degrees normal. 400 is, uh, sorry, 180 fan because most people have fan ovens anyway or gas mark six. Everything's, yeah. everything's all been cooked at that more or less. And I'm trying to do like two at a time to save yeah. my oven because I just, you know, know how efficient you need to be with your oven. And you can make that and keep them in a box and then just bring them out when your neighbour appears in, you know, for drinks or whatever else. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the the chilli, um, sorry, the Bombay nuts, chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Up here, I have got chilli and ginger nuts. Mm -hmm. And... This is a totally different ball game. This is um, mixed nuts mm -hmm. from any health food shop. I've actually got them from Great Tree because that's the, the shop down at Loman Shores, you know, which is closest to me for that. And I've got mixed nuts there, but the bag that I used to begin with was selected whole nut kernels. 
-hmm. So any kind of nuts or whatever else you've got. And, and if you don't like cashews, buy a nut selection for yourself that doesn't have cashews in it. Or hazelnuts, walnuts, you know, these sort of things. So it's just, um, uh, 350 grams of mixed nuts, which is 12 ounces or thereabouts. Um, you want to whisk up an egg white and add half a teaspoon each of chili flakes, medium curry powder, cayenne pepper, ground ginger, and five tablespoons of soft brown sugar. Mm -hmm. So again, this is just whatever spices or herbs or anything. If you don't like ginger, don't put in the ginger, put something else, you know, in for it. Um, and with this one, you want to whisk the egg white, add the spices and the sugar and whisk them to combine, and then add the nuts and stir or toss them to coat. Again, it's 200 degrees or 180 degrees off the fan, gas mark six. Line a baking tray again. To, um, to put the nuts onto it. Sprinkle with some salt and roast for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, kind of halfway through, use a spatula or a spoon or something, you know, just to break them up because they will become quite um, stuck together, you know, because of the sugar and such like. Um, so just kind of move them about in such way. Um, you then leave them to cool after 15 minutes and break them up to serve them. I probably haven't broken these up, you know, well enough, but sometimes it's quite nice just to pick yeah. up a bit, a bit of nut and stick in your mouth without having to think, I mean, to go back for three or four peanuts or whatever <laughs> else, you know, you've got a big lump yeah. in your mouth. Quite croquant, isn't it? It's nice. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so that's the, the chili and ginger nuts, and that's a BBC Good Food recipe. Mm -hmm. um, a very old recipe, if I remember correctly, maybe 2014 or something like that, yeah. was the magazine that I had torn the piece of paper out of. You know how you keep all these bits of sheets of paper and such like. And um, but it still is online because I did go on, you know, just to see that that was that was definitely there. Right. Caroline, Christine Kyle's asked, can you just repeat the spices for that one, please? The spices for that one was half a teaspoon each of chili flakes medium curry powder, cayenne pepper, and ground ginger. Mm -hmm. Five tablespoons of soft brown sugar, an egg white, and 350 grams of mixed nuts. And right. they're, they're just moorish. I mean, there's plenty on this table for us to be having for a supper tonight, but I could sit down and just eat all these nuts at the one go. As I said <laughs> to Pauline earlier on, I had made these last week. I don't have the stamina now for doing a whole lot of baking and cooking at the one time. So I need to pace myself out and, and put them in a box and then put the box away in a cupboard where it could be an eyesight to see that you want to eat that. You know, if it's lying on top of the unit, you can see it. Mm -hmm. Or if it's up in the cupboard <laughs> where all the chocolate and the biscuits and the things are, you can see it. So you put it in a cupboard where there's dishes that you're oh. not going to see food. You know, <laughs> seafood, eat it. That's the size yeah. I am, but hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. So the the next one that I've got here is mini cheese and bacon muffins. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody can make a muffin. A muffin is the easiest <laughs> thing ever to make. You don't need to bring out, you know, your food processor or your Kenwood or anything like that. So, um, again, it's a good housekeeping recipe. It's a an up-to-date one. I think it might have been from a magazine in the summer or maybe kind of pre um, the Jubilee or something like this, but it's good housekeeping. Mini bacon and cheese muffins. So three smoked streaky bacon rashers, which you finely chop up. 150 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of mature cheddar, finely grated, a teaspoon of mustard powder, a large egg and 125 mils of milk. So you want to fry off the bacon in a dry frying pan. You know what bacon's like just now, there's a lot of water comes out of it. It depends on the quality of the bacon that you're buying, how much water comes out. Mm -hmm. So you're buying an Aldi bacon, there's a lot more water comes out of it than a Marks and Spencer's bacon. 
-hmm. you pay your money, you know, you've just got to kind of take that. So once you've fried it, put it onto a, um, a bit of kitchen roll, you know, just so that it's taken the water and all the, um, the bits and pieces out of it. Um, and mix together the flour, most of the cheese, the mustard powder, powder and season it. So in a separate bowl, um, mix together the egg, the milk and the cooked bacon. Add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients and mix until just combined. Don't over stir it in any way or it will become very, very heavy with a muffin. You want it just to be mixed so that it's just going to be light and fluffy and such like. Um, I have 24, there's enough in this mixture for 24 of these mini muffins. Mm -hmm. So I have two trays of 12 mini muffins and I put the wee, wee cases in and just spoon it in. If you want to make them in a bigger size for your breakfast or whatever else, you know, go ahead and do it. Muffins are the easiest thing in the world. You know, I think anybody could have a go at making a muffin and it would still turn out all right. Mm -hmm. And you've got so many other varieties if you want to put a wee bit of pepper in it or if you want to make a sweet one with some grated um, apple or something like that. So they're baked in the oven. Again, that's um, 180 degrees um, for 12 minutes until they're just, just springy to the touch. Um, they would be better served room temperature or just maybe from the oven. They don't need to be, you know, extremely from the, 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 the oven, but they're, they're quite nice just to have a wee bit of spring in them. But um, you could make them in advance and then just stick them into the microwave for a short time just to blast a wee bit of heat in them, you know, to, you know, take them on. Could you just repeat the cheese amount for those muffins? The cheese was... 50 grams. Brilliant. And I think today I probably had maybe about 70 or 80 grams because, you know, you've got that bit of cheese in your fridge that you're <laughs> using up and it's just, why are we keeping 10 or 20 grams? Just put it all in. It's just, yeah. it's going to go. Um, <laughs> and you're spreading a wee bit of cheese on the top of some, yeah. you know, as well. So, yeah, a wee bit of cheese. <sighs> um. I follow a recipe to, recipe to a certain extent, but I'm a wee bit hash it and bash it in some of the things when it comes to just, well, that's a wee bit extra cheese or that's a wee bit, you know, it's just, I mean, I think it said, yeah, three smoked streaky bacon rashers. Well, I was using normal bacon, so that was more bacon than what streaky bacon rashers, you know, would have been. So, uh, yeah, just throw it in, it'll turn out all right. Just, just, just repeat the milk as well, please, Caroline. The milk Sorry. was 125, 125 mils of milk. Yeah. One large egg. And that went in with the streaky bacon once you had cooked it. Um, 150 grams of self-raising flour, 50 grams of mature cheddar, finely grated, and a teaspoon of mustard powder, which was the dry lot and the wet lot, which you need to put together. Um, you need to excuse me in the fact that I've not got nice photocopied, you know, things. I've got everything all written down and we That's can't fine. see it. Fine. Huh? Because my uh, my computer and my printer are not talking <laughs> to each other. Right. So um, they're not stuck together all the time because the, laptop, the laptop's used all the time, but the printer doesn't get used very often. So it's in a cupboard. So when nice. you bring it out... The you have forgotten that they're friends with each other, you Eating know, the... and you need to <laughs> disconnect it. I don't know what the, what's the word that you need to do. And then Leave you need it. to re <laughs> reconnect it and whatever else. And I just got to the stage where I went, hey, I'm just writing everything down. That's fine. Because that's, that's just fine. the way that, that's what I am. <laughs> and then this other one here that's already made up is... Um, Creamy garlic prawn toasts. Yum. And that again is a good housekeeping magazine recipe. So it's um, small pieces of baguette. And um, I used a, a pre cooked or a, a pre made half baguette, um, which I then baked off last night when I was baking. The muffins, I think it was, um, to keep the oven all going at the one time, sliced it up. So it says um, 12, 12 baguette slices. 
Well, I sliced it up there. I think there's maybe 18 of them there, just slicing very, very thinly and, um, and put them into a box and then made this, you know, up to date. Um, again, this would be better if it was just a wee bit, you know, fresher, um, just maybe out the oven or such like, but um, for ease and speed and whatever else to do, this is what I did. Mm -hmm. So um, you mix together 100 grams of soured cream, 50 grams of mayonnaise and two garlic cloves crushed. And it says 50 grams of cheddar coarsely grated. Um, again, probably I was erring on the high side of the, the cheese because you need to put in about half the cheddar. So there would be a good 30 grams maybe went in with the mixture. And um, that's all sort of mixed together. And then the prawns, you're needing 200 grams of cooked and peeled king prawns, roughly chopped. So you mix your sour cream, your mayonnaise, your garlic, and the cheddar together with the king prawns, and um, two tablespoons of freshly chopped chives. Now, chives are very, very, very difficult to get at this time of the year, or at least in my part of the west of Scotland, they're very difficult. However, Morrison's and Dumbarton did have them, so I have got chives. And you just mix that all together, put it on top of the baguette slices and put it into the oven. And when they come out of the oven, you want to scatter a wee bit more of the chives on top of them. They take eight to 10 minutes or until they're golden and the cheese is kind of bubbling through on them. Um, put over the rest of the chives and then that's, you know, ready there, you know, just to okay. nibble away, you know, so mm -hmm. it's prawns. Creamy garlic prawn toasts from a good housekeeping recipe. And again, that's a very modern one. I think that was a summer type magazine that um, I had taken that recipe from. Mm -hmm. Just because I keep all these wee things, you know, I don't know about the rest of you. She must have piles of magazines and yeah. bits and pieces and sheets of paper. It's got, you know, something written on it. And then um, uh, you think, yeah, I could maybe make that. Yeah. So that was very easily made. Um, again, that's good housekeeping, that's Christmas gin recipe. Right, so mini salmon roasties. Mm -hmm. Now this is from the Good Housekeeping magazine this month, or maybe it's last month, December, whatever they call the Christmassy one. And um, mini salmon roasties, so we've got mini new potatoes. Mm -hmm. And they're very small, just a mouthful, and that's all you need. Mm -hmm. So you want to take half a tablespoon of oil and put it into a tray with these roast potato with these potatoes and roast them. That's all you need to do. Just roast them off. Um, how long how long does that take? Kat? That was what was that? About 20 minutes. Yeah, it's 200 degrees, 180 fan, 30 to 35 minutes. Now, I'm cheating because I'm trying to do things and I know I'm not fit for doing a whole lot of things at the one time. So I actually did these potatoes last week and put them in the freezer. But I wouldn't recommend that you do that. Maybe do them a day or two days in advance because I think today they're quite watery. They're not as good as what a roast potato would expect to be just because it's been, you know, in the freezer. But hey, it's only Eric and I that's going to eat them tonight or throw them out if we do eat them tonight or tomorrow. So um, 30 to 35 minutes, tossing them occasionally, you know, just to get the, the oil through them. And then in a small bowl, mix together 60 grams of creme fraiche, a half to a tablespoon of creamed horseradish. That will depend on your taste. We quite like horseradish, so I did put almost a tablespoonful in. And a tablespoon of finely grated lemon zest. Now, what's a tablespoon of finely grated lemon zest? I just took a lemon and finely grated it over the bowl, and that was it. Whether there was a tablespoon or what, I don't know. But it was a lemon zest that was grated over it. And um, you mix this mixture together, which is what I've got, you know, in the bowl here. 
you also need um, smoked salmon trimmings, but I just have a packet of smoked salmon, which I've kind of taken wee bits and, and such like, you know, and moved it, you know, about. Because smoked salmon, you don't get a huge amount anyway when you're taking a, a slice or anything like that. So you as well just to cut it up into the wee bits. If you can find trimmings, I'm sure there must be a, an awful lot more cheap. But um, that was an off on the co-op a couple of months ago. Um, got two for six pound or something like this and I stuck it in the freezer because smoked salmon keeps very well. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now is take her mini roasties, a spoonful of the creme fraiche mixture on top of it, a wee bit of smoked salmon and a little piece of dill. Lovely. Now dill can sometimes be very difficult to find as well but uh, Tesco and Coburnie had it at the weekend and um, Morrison's at Dumbarton had it yesterday so this was obviously a, a time for collecting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything that I don't use here in the way of herbs, I'll just put into the freezer mm -hmm. and save them for the next time when I'm needing them. Yeah. Um, and by the way, when the roast potatoes come out and they get to a temperature, flatten them a wee bit. And the recipe said to use a potato masher to flatten it. Mm -hmm. My fingers did just as well. Yeah you know, just to kind of flatten it, you know, so that it wasn't going to be maybe the full one that you wouldn't be able to put anything onto. So um, that was, that was the recipe there. And just take a wee bit of smoked salmon and a wee bit of dill. And that'll fill up the the nice piece of um, nice piece of my tree. You know, you would notice when you saw Linda in her house, she's got all these lovely, yeah, lovely know, trees, yeah. um, cake stands sitting about. Um, I go into my cupboard and open up the packet, the box, and take them out and kind of think, that was a present from Margaret and Sandy Dick for her. Was it what wedding anniversary was it? We had our thirtieth wedding anniversary or something like that. This one I bought myself somewhere. There's another one which was a gift from a secret Santa at work. You know, it's just all these things that you you have a wee memory from them, don't you? Yes. I mean, Linda can probably tell you everyone where her you know came mm -hmm. from or whatever. But um, yeah, lovely. So um, so that's the mini roast potatoes, mini salmon roast potatoes from okay. a Good Housekeeping magazine, either this month or last month. It was a kind of Christmassy one. Mm -hmm. um, I've still got the magazine, so it might be the November one, because Jamie, mm -hmm. I pass them on to my sister, you know, afterwards. Would you take that away up the road? And well, that's great. Um, and you, you know the dill. Do you would you um, recommend putting dill in a, in a glass of water? Because I've done that before, and sometimes it lasts for quite a long time. You know, you treat it like a a cut flower. Kind yes, of like um, like parsley. You know, I would put parsley into a, yeah. a, a, a jar. Dill as well. Um, I don't know that I'm likely to be using this. You know, maybe yeah. in the next two or three weeks of. Yeah. I've got a lot of Christmas lunches on. I'm going out tomorrow for my first one, and then I've oh, got next Thursday, and then I've got two the following week. And <coughs> excuse me, I'm maybe not going to be uh, doing a lot of catering in the no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just put this into the freezer, and it'll come back out, and it'll be it'll be all right, you know, for using. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh gosh, look at the time. Need to keep going. That's all right. So, you start. After this, I've got just a selection of um, Bellini's toppings. So these are Bellini's um, from Marks and Spencer's. Mm -hmm. You can buy them in Tesco, you can buy them in lots of different, you know, shops and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or you can make your own if, um, if you're so inclined. I don't have a lot of stamina for standing about. Um, so it's not something that, um, I have. I also have these little cups, Cristadi cups. So you'll get these in a, 
a nice delicatessen, good farm shop, or, you know, a fancier place, you know, just, well, I don't think you would get them in Tesco, maybe they have them in Sainsbury's or Waitrose or some of these places. So these, these are what I've got here. And the tip from the man at the Gosford Bossy shop in East Lothian was when I was buying them and telling them what I was going to be trying to do, you know, in a couple of months time, he said, um, paint them with um, melted butter so that they stay crisp and the filling, the soft filling that you're going to put in isn't going to, you know, soften them up. Mm, that's so that's what I did. I melted a wee bit of butter and um, and just painted them with some butter earlier on so that hopefully these will all stay crisp when I put everything else into it. So what have I got? Um, I've got anything and everything here, you know, I was just making up wee, wee bits and pieces when I had a bit there and thought, well, that can maybe be used for, you know, such like, when I was defrosting the prawns for the creamy garlic prawns, I did some extra ones and I've just put that into some uh, mayonnaise, mm -hmm. or Mary Rose sauce, really. So um, this was a trick from the hotel trade where I started many, many, many years ago. So it's um, mayonnaise, or can it, probably more quantity of mayonnaise than what it is, um, ketchup, mm -hmm. and a wee bit of Worcester sauce, you know, just to kind of slacken it down. Um, depending on what quantities and such like that you're catering for, um, I couldn't tell you what to do. It was just, I think it was a spoonful of mayonnaise and maybe a squeeze of tomato ketchup. I didn't put any Worcester sauce in it today because I thought that I had maybe used too much tomato ketchup and it was a wee bit kind of thin. So I, uh, I did um, prawn cocktail, which is all that is. And because it's been buttered, it should stay on longer. Yes. Now, it being prawns, you should really put a wee bit of no. dill on top of it. But um, if you're not keen on dill or anything like that, I've got maybe a wee bit of uh, cucumber, which I just, you know, did a, a small piece of. Or chives, because I had the chives, so I had plenty of them that... Um, Just something to, you know, do a wee bit of green colouring, you know, on the top of it. Lovely. So, we kind of wee crustadi things there. Mm -hmm. Take a wee bit of creme fraiche. Spread that one to your, what am I doing? That's upside down. You want to put them up the proper way. <laughs> right, an upside down one and the rest will be the other way. A wee bit of creme fraiche. Go into the base. Again, these are probably just a wee bit better if they've got a, a wee blast in the oven or the microwave for that, just to kind of soften them up a wee bit. These have been taken out of the freezer, so they're maybe just a wee bit, you know, hard. Um, so a bit of creme fraiche in the base, just something that's a wee bit softer to hold the topping on with, because what I do again, there would be some smoked salmon. That's your odd one, so forget about that one. Got something on my arm there. <laughs> and again, a wee bit of dill. Or A chive. Mm -hmm. Another thing that goes nicely with that, Caroline, is uh, is uh, beetroot. Beetroot, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. That. Just uh, just a thought. I've got beetroot through there, but I'm not going to start lifting it out at this time. Oh, no. Um. And another option for this is. Um,
a wee bit of roast beef. Mm. This is very thinly, finely sliced roast beef, which um, is nice. And if you wanted to, I've got some cornishons or mm -hmm. mini, mini gherkins. And um, I would put a wee bit of roast beef round about that <coughs> and sit it on the top. Oh, yeah, lovely. So you've got a bit of um, gherkin. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's very much an acquired taste. I have family that don't like gherkins or anything at all. I remember the first time I took my niece and nephew to a McDonald's mm -hmm. um, going for burgers or whatever else. Oh, no, no gherkins, no gherkins, mm -hmm. you know. So um, that was uh, the kind of reason when I thought, oh, there's people that don't like gherkins. Mm -hmm. I've also got some um, wee bits of olive, you know, so you could just put a wee piece of olive or something you know, in the top of it for a, a different, you know, colour variation. And for the vegetarian people about us, this is just ordinary egg mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Egg mayonnaise with um, some cress through it, just so it's just two uh, boiled eggs. A wee bit of mayonnaise, a wee bit of cress, and that's a, a vegetarian option for somebody. You can even put that onto a, a bellini. Mm -hmm. Just to um, not forget about the, the people with dietary requirements. Yeah, one of one of our one of our participants, Naomi, said that the muffins that you did earlier they make an ideal snack for brunch. Um, for if people are gluten intolerant, and um, she said also if you add the mushroom, add mushroom instead of bacon, they're great for vegetarian guests as well. So yes, yeah, uh huh. Just um, muffins are are so easy. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I prefer a sweeter one to a savoury one. You know, so I'm more likely to do one with apple in it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you look great. So there's an egg mayonnaise one. Also got some patty. Oh, yeah. And this is just a smooth Aldi patty. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just in a, a piping bag with star nozzle on it to mm -hmm. do a wee bit of... Um, Fancy pants. Aye, a bit of fancy <laughs> pants, really. That's what it is. And just decorate it with whatever else you know you would want to to do. Just a wee bit of red uh, red paper. Mm -hmm. I'll put these up there, maybe. Mm. And the other one I do have here is mini sausages. Now, these are just three Christmas sausages that you get at this time of the year. And um, this is a wee bit of soft cheese that's um, going to go into the bellinis here. And again, all these recipes or ideas have come out of Good Food or BBC, uh, the Good Housekeeping magazine or something. So a wee sausage and then it's supposed to be a bit decorative. The other one's put on the other way that's split open. Um, maybe not as decorative as what they could be. And a wee bit of maple syrup because these were um, you, uh, toasted with maple syrup okay. um, earlier on. 
And again, these would be much better if they were hot, you know, the wee sausage rolls, rather than the... Uh, that came from Canada. That was brought over by uh, a friend from Canada. Proper, proper maple syrup. Great. I thought it looked like a Canadian jar. A <laughs> Canadian jar, yes, and it will be. It's um, maple syrup, syrup d'érable, hundred percent pure, grade A. Yes, uh -huh. <laughs> the good stuff. So that's a wee nod to the Canadian Anne and Canadian <laughs> side of it here. That was brought over there. And uh, sorry, I have run well over time here. Well, it's been fun. With, um, I, what I'm doing and that sort of thing, but it's a, it's a wee selection of uh, what you could be doing. There's a lot of other things online if you want to, you know, go ahead and, mm -hmm. uh, and come up with your own ideas. Hi there. Hi, everybody. Um, I'll try and make mine, you know, a little bit shorter. I don't want to keep you, keep you all night, but we're going to have a look at some festive bags. Wait, I'm going wait. to show you the basic recipe for making the bag. I'm going to just make it in a small size because it's easier for you to see, but you can vary the sizes depending on what it is you're wrapping. But the one we're going to aim at doing <clears throat> is this little Santa bag. Oh, it's lovely. Okay, lovely. which came from a site called uh, The Little Crafties on YouTube um, and also The Craft Studio have the same one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is just made from an A4 sheet, but you could, of course, upscale it and, and make a bigger one. Yeah. All right. Probably, yeah. Great. Okay, so that's what we're going to make. So I'm just going to change my camera now um, over here. Okay. That's great. Okay, this one was over here. So you start off with um, this is slightly slightly larger than an A4 sheet. I'm just going to um, get rid of the photos down the side so I can see what I'm doing on the screen there. Move them over there. That's fine. Okay. So we start with an A4 sheet, and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to turn the top over by about a centimetre. Um, so take a ruler. I'm only I'm just doing it by eye. I'm not measuring this. And then you're going to use the blunt, the blunt scissors. Don't open them up and score them open because it rips the paper. And you're just going to score straight down like that. Okay. And then fold the top of the bag over. Like that. Okay, and then it's entirely up to you. I've been using print stick, but print stick does tend to get a little bit messy. So mm -hmm. I've got here a little um, milk top with a bit of glue in. And I'm just going to run a bit of glue down here. All the way down, like that. And then turn the edge over. So I'm not going to glue that yet. I made a mistake. I don't glue that down yet. Before I do that, I'm going to turn the bag into a, like this, sort of work out where I'm going to overlap it. And press both sides down, leaving a little overlap at the back. Okay. Again, if things go crooked to top and bottom, you can trim it. And at that stage, I'm going to just glue that overlap. Yeah. You can also make this in thicker cards, but it will take a bit more effort with the folding and the creasing. So you're going to, first of all, you're going to make that. This is flat, and then we've done that. Brick sticks easier here because it does actually glue quicker. Yeah, with glue, yeah. with glue, you have to yeah. And then once you've done that, then you can turn the top over, all the way round. 
Show us how you're doing that, man. It's just you just I'm not, yeah, you're just, I'm just gonna I'm yeah. going to actually I'm going to actually use print stick because the glue's not um not holding. So I'm going to it just makes more of a mess of your surface, but yeah. I'll oh, just glue the bag round. Start with. Press the sides. Like that. It's better. And then open it up. And then put the top over. You just fold you're it. Going, sorry, can you see it? Just turning the top over now. Yeah. If you were going to, these are quite lightweight bags. If it was going to be something heavier, I might be tempted to put a strip of card underneath that top edge mm -hmm. just to strengthen it before I glued it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now you end up, you've got the top turned over and the bag in half greased both sides. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the next stage is you're going to make the side panels of the bag. And to do that, you do need to measure the same distance each side. So I'm going to do two centimetres in from the edge. Just make some marks, top, middle and bottom, two centimetres. And down here. And then again, line up your marks. I have to keep make sure you can see this. Oh, if we can, yeah. And score. And do the other side. Two centimeters. Top. Middle. Bottom. Obviously, the bigger the bag, the more you're going to do, and the more that you come in at the sides, the squarer the bag will be. So it's just a bit like um, Caroline was saying, it's a bit hit and miss. You just go with the flow and it's not it's not really going to go wrong. It's just going to be a different sort of shape. Yeah. Score again with the blunt scissors. And then fold. Fold and press. And with the thin paper that I'm using, that's probably enough. But you can always run a bone folder down or a side of a ruler just to give you a nice sharp crease both sides fingers bone folder and then I always fold it the other way as well both sides and then when you open that up you can see now you've got this bit that you folded sticking up mm -hmm. And the other two bits are valleys, but you're going to change that by pushing the middle bit down and the outside bits up. Like that. Like that. So get the side of your bag like that. Can you see? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that both sides. So open it up. The bit that's the mountain or the hill is going to become a valley and the bits that were sticking down are going to come up. Right, so. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, agree. Right, at this point, make sure you have the top of the bag at the top, the bit you folded over and the bottom at the bottom. Okay. Okay, so this is the bit folded over, that's the top of the bag, lie it down. And at this point, if you're not happy, if you think it's too long, you can cut it before you do the next folding. OK, and I might just cut a little bit off. And what I've got here is I've got a fabric cutter. But when my blades go blunt, I put a P on them and then I use them for paper. Oh. OK, so I've got a selection in my box that have got P on. And then I. I hope you're talking about the letter P, Maz, yeah? Yes, the letter P. Good, good. Because all the other ones that haven't got P on are fabric. And um, you don't want to use a fabric one on paper at blunt. No. Okay, so that's that's the bag ready now for the bottom fold. 
Now, the only thing you have to remember for the bottom of the bag is whatever measurement we did here, which was two centimetres, this has to be slightly bigger. So you get a little overlap mm -hmm. on the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to do maybe two and a half to three. I'll do three. So three. Three. And three. Okay. And again, the ruler and score the bottom of the bag. And fold it one way, turn it over and fold it the other way. Okay. And then at this point, while it's folded, you're going to take this corner here and fold it up to meet the top edge. So it forms a small triangle. Can you see that? Yep. And you do that both sides. And again, to fold it one way and fold it the other way. So you can use your nails for this one. Okay, and the other side, fold the top corner to the crease and fold it both ways. And then open out the bottom of the bag. Okay, so now, okay, you're going to fold the bag down like that. Mm -hmm. You see? Yep. Both sides. Okay, and then fold the triangle bit. Quite hard to see on the camera. Both sides. The folds are there, so you know it's quite easy to see. You imagine you're going to make it into a little envelope there. Yeah. And the other side, fold down and fold the triangles back. It looks like the top of an envelope each side, mm -hmm. like that. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, first time, we're just going to glue the triangles on one side. I'm going to use the prick stick because the glue's. When I use the glue, I actually use the glue and then I use these little heads to hold to hold the glued parts together. But um, because we're moving a bit swiftly, I'm not doing that tonight. And then you're going to put it in and glue it. Now that's this is a quite a fiddly bit. But what I've discovered I do as well, I glue it like that. Then I stand the bag up. And I've got this long knitting needle with a nice rounded point on it. Yeah. Put it inside the bag and pat it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other side, we're going to glue two triangles, but we're also going to glue the top edge of this flap here. Two triangles on the top edge. Okay. Two triangles and the top edge. And then again, we're going to fold that up, put it down flat, go in with a ruler that will do it, flat wooden, a flat wooden, pin, wooden uh, you know, rolling pin, or something. And then, I said they're lightweight bags. At this point, optional, you can measure the dimensions of the bottom of the bag yeah. and just cut a bit of card that's very slightly smaller. So I've got the bit of card here, and this measures. Um, do it the right way around. That room is rubbish. All oh, now. It's about 100 to 12 centimeters by four. So I'll just put it a little bit less than 12 by four, and I can use my mat here because this is centimeters on my mat. 12 by four. So I'll cut the four first, just a little bit less than four. And 12, um, 5, 10, 12, a bit less than 12, just, just slightly smaller so it fits in. Okay. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on it. Put it in, drop it into the bottom of the bag, and press it down with the and that just gives a little bit of stability to the bottom of the bag. 
Yeah. Okay, so it's inside the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you're going to cut same couple of strips of um, paper, the same colour as your bag. This is about one and a half centimetres wide. Again, if your bag's bigger, you can cut it a bit wider. And you're just going to fold the strip in half all the way down. And obviously you do two, the two handles. Fold it in half all the way down and glue it. And very luckily, glue Peter fashion, here's one I did <laughs> earlier. So it was a few minutes. You take your handles, bend them round, how they're going to go on the bag. And then at this point, you're going to glue them on the inside of the bag, like that. And you can adjust how big or how small you want them. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm just perhaps going to cut a little tiny bit off. Same off of each one. Make them a tiny bit smaller. And then we're going to glue the ends. And you're going to glue them inside like that. Get the glue in that back so I don't ruin my... Okay. Light on the mat. Glue the ends. And then I stick them on about maybe two centimetres in from each side. Mm -hmm. One there. Put a little peg on. Hold it. And one there. Same distance in. Put a little peg on to hold it. The next one. Yeah. Cut that little bit off it again. Oh, I did it, did I already? <clears throat> right. And this one, again, glue. The ends. And these are going in this side of the bag, about the same distance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me put a peg on there for a minute. And that's the basic bag. And you can make them this size. That's just a bit bigger than A4. Mm -hmm. Bigger tiny that's the basic bag yeah now this one is going to be the center bag so we're going to start with a bit just a black belt and we're going to i'm just going to cut it a little bit longer than the bag and then trim it finally when it's on and i'm going to glue the belt and this is all just done with bits of card around the house it was quite hard i didn't have any many much black and i thought well if you didn't have black you could just paint black or you know, colour something black. Yeah. And that gets put onto the bag about four or five centimetres up from the bottom. And then we can trim the bit that's uh, sticking out. Glue it on, turn it over, and just trim it, trim it off. Okay. That's that. Mm -hmm. Then you take a square of card. It's, this is about four, or paper, this is about four centimetres square. And on the other side, you're going to mark one centimetre in all the way round, or whatever distance suits your eye. And then with a sharp knife, you're going to cut out that centre square. So you end up with this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. See that? Yep. And that is your buckle. And you glue the buckle. And if you want to be exact, you can measure. I'm just going to use my eyes and put the buckle on the middle of the belt. Okay. Next thing, we're going to get a piece of white card. That's probably glued now. I can take the pegs off. <clears throat> take the, the piece of white card. And that is going to be measured to fit across there. Okay, so for the for now, I'm just going to just draw a line. It's not going to be exact to start with, but I'll finish it off when I've uh, attached it. And I'll just trim that at the top of the map. Um, hmm. Where did that mark go?
That's roughly right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to make a mark on this about halfway along the bag, halfway, and maybe a centimeter down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I've got a pair of these. I'm not. I won't use my good pink in shears because they're only for fabric. But I've got a pair of these cheap. Yeah. Scissors that make, or you could cut a wavy line yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to come from this corner up to the dot in a curve. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to go to the other corner, come up to meet again in the middle. Okay, mm -hmm. then I'm going to glue that, and I've got to trim it at the end, but I'm just going to glue it now. And I'm going to attach the white collar of Santa's costume there. Put my hands inside just to press it. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can just take a little black felt tip here and just put in some little dots. I'm doing these quickly, but. Okay. Okay, and then you can just turn it round and scissors, I'll use a bigger pair of scissors and trim, just trim off anything that's sticking out beyond the bag. On the back, yeah, you can see it sticking out. Okay, so use a button or a coin and cut out two circles. And then I, I actually used a button on top of it and put the four dots where the the holes are in the button. I tried it by eye and it was rubbish, <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to use a button. Put the button on, just put a pencil through the four holes, then with your black felt tip, you can just touch them. And glue them. This is where the, the print stick makes everything very gluey. And then I'm going to put one at the top here. And Second one, the bottom, right? So, and there you have a very simple Santa bag. That looks fab. Should you put it over to the, yeah, that's it. That looks fab. I'll go back to this one um, because oh, that, so that's the Santa one. Yeah. Um, this one, same thing, snowman. Great. And this one, a reindeer. <laughs> these online, these are all online. Yeah. And this one I just did. So this one, I just made a plain green bag. Mm -hmm. And instead of paper handles, I've just put some cord on it. You know, it might be something a little bit heavier in the bag and you want a stronger handle, a little bit of cord. And then in my um, embellishments box, if ever I have a card, Christmas card that's got anything Christmassy on it, I take it off and keep it. But this yeah. one's just got a couple of little embellishments. Lovely. And Lovely. You could put a label on it, or you could have, turn it over, you could have a little reindeer. Yeah, yeah. That's off a card, or even a snowflake. Yeah. Lovely. So they're simple little Christmas bags. You can make them big. You can make them small. Obviously, the bigger they are, perhaps the stronger paper you need to use. Mm -hmm. It could be made out of newspaper and just have something stamped on it or a red bow on it. Yep. Anything from around the house. Lovely. That's lovely. It. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Maz. You're very welcome. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. I'm going to ask everyone to unmute and we're just going to have a wee, a wee, quick, uh, a wee quick look at everyone in a quick short <laughs> time as well. So... Is that good, folks? That was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. 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 Lots of great, lots of great yes. ideas. 
Brilliant. Can I can I ask um I can I ask I know I, I know I see a lot of people I recognise, but can I ask if you're if you're not a member of SWI, just put your hand up. Um no, there's no problem. We're not we're not gonna throw you out. Now <laughs> 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 um, we've got a few few non members. Great, welcome, welcome. So mm -hmm. um so before I before I um I, I ask you all to give everybody a, a round of applause. Um, I just wanted to let you know we've got quite a few different things coming up in the, in the few, next few months. Um, so if you go to our website, which is swi.org.uk, um, you'll find lots of different things that we're doing. We've got a, a um, we've got a Christmas quiz um on the fifteenth. Um, and we've got um, you can win 50, 50 pound Marks and Spencer's voucher on that. That's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's but it's not all it's not all general knowledge questions. If you're not a big quizzer, don't worry. Um, it's got there's going to be lots of different fun things. Um, and me McDonald, who's our past chairman of the SWI, is is going to be playing live music for us, which will be hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, and then on next next year, early next year, we've got a beginner's guide to macarons with um with Rachel um Haggerty, um mm -hmm. from uh, from Mademoiselle Macaron in, in uh, Edinburgh, and she's going to be how to, how to make macarons. And then we've got the, the Hebridean baker who has twenty million TikTok fa fans. Um, mm -hmm. He's going to come on and talk to us about sustainable baking and, and how we can make things for. For not as many pences so so that'll be great that's that's in february Good. um so, so please please feel free to join us for those two um and they're on our our, um, our website swi and thank you very much tonight for everyone who donated to the trussell trust we've made we I haven't quite looked at the figure but but we've definitely made over 100 pounds tonight which is great and that's okay. going to go to the Trussell Trust who um, they, um, they supply uh, food baskets and food, food parcels for people who are, uh, who are in need. And especially over Christmas and, and uh, there'll be a lot of people who I'm sure are in need. So thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so lastly, just um, give everyone, give a, a round of applause to our three lovely demonstrators. Thank you so much, Matt. Linda yeah. and Caroline, thank you. Um,